guys welcome back to this place and if you are new welcome here for the very first time I'm Carmen this is Samuel this is Loki and today we are watching season three episode two of for all mankind we have fast forwarded into the 90s although it is 1992 not 1995 like I thought I was thinking of the flashback last season but since they're talking about being on track for Mars 1996 makes sense we aren't already in 1995 because they don't seem ready for it yet. Last time we had Karen and Sam Cleveland's space hotel mess up a lot basically and almost kill a lot of people, did kill Sam Cleveland, did kill a few other people but Danny saved the day so that was good. I like Danny so yeah and Ed lived and Danielle lived so he is like up here in my book right now and Karen um so yes uh what else we also have poor Margot still being used by the Soviet Union even though she doesn't know that she's being used by them we have Aleda going to space I don't know why I was going like this we have her going to space hopefully everything goes well she's going to Mars I believe and yeah that's sort of like the broad strokes of where we are. So let's, you know, fill in some of the finer detail by watching this episode. Miss Baldwin. Hmm. Thank you for coming all the way out here. What is your name, sir? And you two built something amazing together. Okay, what do you want, though? You want to offer her something for it? That's why I asked you here. He wants to buy you out? He wants to buy you out, is my my guess. You were gonna sell Polaris off for parts you would make me a lowball offer. What does he want? Why is he offering so much? What does he need? You are not just in this for the money. He wants the prestige no. of having the first hotel in space that is working. Yeah, I read somewhere you're testing a new methane engine. From what I know, mm -hmm. methane doesn't offer much advantage for trips to the moon. Mm. But it does to Mars. Ooh, he wants Mars. From what I can tell, Helios doesn't have a ship that could support a crew for a two-year trip. So you must be five years away from building one. Seven, actually. Ooh. But if you were to acquire a ship that could support human life, let's say my hotel, and attach your new engines to it. That's a fascinating theory. What's wrong with it? I'd sell it for money. Like, what's she gonna do? Or, like... You seriously think you can do it? My dad came to this country with just a few shillings in his pocket. He got a degree and became an engineer. And he obviously has a lot he of money. He believed what Jack Kennedy said. In America, anything's possible. Being first, it meant something. But you are going up against the two wealthiest, most powerful nations in the world. And if they divide up Mars like they did the moon, we'll never end this destructive cycle, this us versus them. Yeah, he's right. In Kenya, there's a Kiswahili word, Harambe. Harambe. It means stronger together, mutual responsibility. That is what Helios mm -hmm. is all about. I mean, he's got good talk, because I'm buying that, into it. That's what's going to push mankind to make the next leap forward colonizing Mars and the moons of, of Saturn and, and Jupiter. Honestly, he's, he's, he's good at talking. I mean, it was worth at least another 10%. <laughs> She's smart. She's smart. She's a businesswoman now. Okay, Karen Baldwin. Done. I'll have my lawyers drop the paperwork. She just keeps stumbling her way into this stuff, kind of, you know? <laughs> like with Sam Cleveland. Congratulations. With this guy. Owner of Helios, I'm assuming. I wonder how much he offered her. I don't read Braille. No, but you transcribe every word the Mistress of Darkness spews from her lair. <laughs> mistress of Darkness? What, she didn't darkness? Go notice this gem buried at the <laughs> end? Astronaut candidates must conform to criteria 
to be established by the Astronaut Candidate Qualifications Committee. Oh. Huh. Committee of hand-picked stooges, no doubt, of all the backstabbing under <laughs> You're overreacting. The committee is merely an advisory board. That's bullshit. This is a power grab, plain and simple. Ooh, shit. She's trying to force my hand. Force your hand? The Mars mission. Our fearless leader needs to remember one thing. I decide who goes up and when. No matter what she writes in any goddamn memo. Come on, Ollie, let's go. Ollie! I love you. You're precious. Listen, with your getting doctorates in advanced robotics and your lunar experience, I think you are ideally suited to command the Mars 98 mission. Ooh. The second Oh, mission I was going to say, I, I just assumed we had, like, pushed so it back. Let me get this straight. My advanced qualifications actually worked against me going first. I want Danielle to get it. They kind of did. I don't suppose the fact that you and Ed go way back. No, don't go there, Danny. You, you and I go just as far. I know. But you're wrong on this one, Molly. Well, it's I my call. I kind of agree. And that's how I see it. Yeah, there's no argument you'd be better at handling the science. But Ed is first, last, and always a test pilot. And he's used to handling the unknown. And a first flight... This is why they should go together. How about we got two peeps? But he is the guy who I think has the best chance of getting the mission done and bringing everyone home alive. Why don't they go together? They work well together. We've seen it in the past. It sucks. Yeah, it does. I and understand I her totally reason. I understand if you don't want to lead his backup crew. So you think about that, you let me know. I don't need to think about it. She'll accept it. I'll back him up. Whatever the program needs. Whatever it needs. I'll be there. You should be on the mission no. with him. As you can see, we can make methane, hydrogen, and oxygen from the atmosphere. And oh, his leg's still broken. The astronaut candidate qualification committee has concerns about your availability for the next couple of years. Because you got Mars. Don't fuck with me, Mom. <laughs> now, why would I do that, Admiral? Because you're drunk with power. <laughs> I never should have given you that job. <laughs> well, we all make decisions we regret. I hope this doesn't turn out to be one of mine. I'm excited, but I just want them to do it together. <laughs> I want them to do it together. I don't want him to be there. That's right. Edward Baldwin is going to command America's first mission to Mars. Fill my heart with song. Let me sing for Go Ed. Go Ed. Oh, shit. You are all I long for, all I worship and adore. Do not fuck, fuck this up. <laughs> No pressure though, Ed, except for all of the pressure in the world. In other words, I love I'm proud of you, but I kind of want you and Danielle to do it together, so I'm still gonna hold on to that hope. You. <gasps> Look at Kelly. Hey there. Yeah. There better not be any weird shit happening here. That's all I gotta say. Came to pick up mom's astronaut pad from Samsung. Hmm, makes sense. <sighs> Can we not? I know what she's At the reception. Saying. I knew what she was gonna say. Can, just let him leave. Just don't talk about Why it. Why did you play it? Just don't talk about it. it. I would like to leave this in the past. That song. I would like to leave this disturbing storyline oh. in the past. As Amber's I do. Okay, we'll just tell her She's no. a Billy Swan fan too. Just tell her no. Just be like, I have a weird relationship with this song. No. Well, it's a great song. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sure. Good night. Why did he walk away so slowly? Is he going to come back? Karen? Yeah? I lied just then. About the song. About you and me. There's no you and me. Just listen. The day of the wedding. 
I felt sick to my stomach. Why? I didn't know exactly what it was until I was out there with the world spinning below me, but... In that moment, I wasn't thinking about Amber. I don't want to hear this. All I was thinking about was you. Oh, no, that's not okay. It's the truth. I, I don't care. I don't I, hear I thought it. about your eyes. Oh, my what? God. Your can hair. we oh not? Can, can we not? not? How am I going to see you? No. Hey! Stop it. Right now. Stop it. You shouldn't have started it in the first that's place enough. with him. Uh, Jesus, I thought that you moved beyond all of this. Don't sleep with someone who's so much younger than Try. you and become their first fucking love. You don't know how hard I tried. Okay, well, I'm not going through it again. You are you are not going to start calling me in the middle of the night again and showing up at my house drunk. Oh, God. It's not going to happen, okay? Why are we continuing this? Could we, we not have, have left it in the past? Please. Why is the storyline still a thing? It was a mistake. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. It never should have happened. That's fucking true. Is it because I had... What? So the way you both were at the wedding. Yeah, I can't believe you're really gonna get back with that son. She was married to him. God, what the, the fuck is wrong with you? you? He to everyone like like he's God's gift to this world or something. Danny, this has nothing to do with Ed. Nothing, okay? You were her son's friend, and you're married. Why? 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 Why could we not have left this storyline? This. Why are they doubling down on this? mistake of a storyline in my opinion like why 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 i'm so annoyed <laughs> i'm running in a party that's infatuated with alpha males yeah. so i need one on the ticket i mean is that it exactly it is true probably someone who will excite the evangelicals that's why i want you to give another look at brag <laughs> it doesn't have to be someone you like it has to be someone the base likes. He's not wrong. You know what he said about Mars? He's in favor of a manned mission. Because he says Mars is in the same orbit as Earth. Which is not and true. And has canals full of water. OK, he's a little fuzzy on the science. <laughs> You'll bring him up to speed. The, the, the point is, he's a founding member of the Conservatives for Jesus Christ. Yeah. Are we sure we want someone that far right on the ticket? How it's is she going to affect change if? You have someone too uh, opposed to change, you know? Okay. Set up a meeting, but I am not making any promises. Like, I was hoping that her becoming president could, like, push further the equality Daddy. movement. <gasps> Did they have kids? Evil hand, evil hand. Evil hand, you know, I haven't seen him. I, I think the coast is clear. Look out, Daddy! Oh, oh that's cute. Oh, oh. oh, they did have a kid. I'm glad they were able to find happiness in their situation, you know, even if it isn't maybe what either of them wanted, you know. Hi, Bob. Hi, Hi Bob. Bob. I love you. You know, Molly, she don't sway easy. Don't I know it? I promise you I'll leave a whole crate of whatever libation you fancy up there on Mars. So long as that geriatric cadaver of yours doesn't wither away <laughs> first. There's zero chance of that. Everything is still rock solid. Except that leg. It'll heal soon enough. I hope so. Because if you stumble, even for just one second, She's swooping in. I'm gonna swoop in and steal your seat in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. Me and my backup crew are gonna be breathing down your neck all the way to long. <laughs> I expect nothing less. I love their friendship so much. <laughs> they make me happy. I think y'all should go to Mars together. I was just, I love them as friends, you know? <gasps> hey, Dad. Kelly! How's your leg? It's fine. No, if you ever return my calls. I know, I'm sorry. Anyways, I, I got some news for you. Don't tell me. Yvonne cracked up another car? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, you might as well know. Uh, she and I, we're, we're split. Now. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, less than a year. Sorry, I did That's not. That's a new not record a for you. I'm not a fan. Oh, at least pretend to be sad about it. I'm sorry, I I'm literally sorry, cheered. That was mean. <laughs> so, where are you moving now? Not back to the Shamrock, I hope. No, I actually found a great new neighborhood. I think you'll love it. 
Really? Where? Mars? Um, in this area <laughs> right here. You got the mission? Holy shit! <laughs> Congrats, Dad! Wow. Mm -hmm. well, I got it. I like their relationship. And word is the Russian engine's got some serious teething problems. So, you bet your ass the US of A is gonna win this race. And, uh, here's a kicker. How'd you like to come with me? <gasps> what? Oh, what, to Mars? You've been preparing for this your whole life, Kel. He's inviting her? Would NASA her? ever risk letting a family fly together on a mission like this? Your old man still got some pull at the office. Oh, God. Me and Molly got an understanding. I yeah, hope. The geezer network. <laughs> geezer. A chance for you to get your head out of the snow, kiddo. Back into the sky. I don't know. I... I'd have to put my research down here on hold for four, maybe five years. I offer you a chance to be one of the first humans on Mars, and you're talking about research? I, I, I just don't get it. Four years of Annapolis, two years of flight school, you aced your astronaut training, and your first trip to Skylab, but instead of going back to space, you're chasing bacteria in the ass end of the world. This research is teaching us how life might have evolved on Mars. We found a strain of Sphingomonas desiccabilis that could survive the extreme cold up there. So come with me, bring some Swingalingus with you, <laughs> and figure out how to grow some shit up there. Sphingomonas. Swingabangus. <laughs> He's trying. He's trying. So, are you in? Of course I'm in. <laughs> I love you. Oh, Always. I hope everything goes good. Love you too, Dad. For both of them. Always. Bye. They're so cute. Ah, I'm emotional. <laughs> Molly gave Mars to Ed. Now I'm his backup. Oh, baby, I'm so sorry. I know how much you wanted it. Um, that was a kind of weird reaction, right? Shouldn't you be more comforting? You don't seem all that broken up about it. Right. You just turn back to cooking. There you go. Move it off and turn it off. Go hug your well, fucking wife. She's obviously going to be upset. I got to admit, I am kind of relieved. Because of what happened to, uh... I thought you were okay with Polaris. Polaris. Like, I knew space was dangerous, but it was kind of... Ambiguous. An abstraction, you know? Now it's real. After what we went through up there. I know, I... It's real now. I get it. But I am still slated to go up in 1998. You know that. I know. But at least Isaiah will be out of school, and you can use all the help he can get. I don't need help. Your midterms would suggest otherwise. <laughs> you know I like to come from behind. I'm on it. We're studying just now. Is that why I heard all that simulated gunfire coming from your room? He playing So, um... Why are we talking about you being home? Mr. Baldwin was selected for the Mars mission. They picked the old white guy. Shocker. You gonna take a walker and colostomy bag up with him? <laughs> okay, come on now. Hey, the good news is I will be around to help you out with that AP history paper. Ooh, this is gonna be so fun. <laughs> I really wish you got that commander job. <laughs> I do not support stem cell research. Why? I am staunchly pro-life. That As am I, has nothing to do with this it. This is a promising area of scientific research that could save lives. Look, I want my vice president to be someone I can rely on for their honest, unvarnished opinion. Always. I, don't, I just don't understand why people have an issue with stem cell research, I'm sorry. <laughs> there is no one I would rather be following into a fray than a true American hero like yourself. It has been too long. I wonder if he would say that if he knew that she was gay. I would be honored, if asked, to serve with you. That's a good step in, like that's a good thing that he said. It's too long that the party's been defined by people who look like him, old white men. Women are the future, or at least div like slightly diversifying. What did you say? Uh, uh, 
No, I just... Molly made the decision already. I mean, you're picking Ed for commander. Shouldn't have been gone. Right? <laughs> you went behind my back when I was out of town. Behind your back? You mean like putting together a bogus committee for selecting the ask hands? Those are some of the finest scientific minds at this agency. Oh, come on. You are trying to cut the balls off this office just like you have every other department in this entire agency over the last 10 years. That's what you think I'm doing? You don't like having someone around who doesn't kowtow to your every whim. I don't care how many friends you got in Washington. <laughs> I will not allow you to steal. Allow? You will not allow? Molly, this isn't the 60s, and NASA's not the same place it was when Deke was around, and your blind refusal... She didn't mean it that way. That's not what I meant. I know what you fucking meant. We, I'm done debating this for you. My job is to assign all the flight crews, including who will command the Mars 96 mission. So I did my job. You should not have done that. Well, what's done is done. No, what's done is now undone. You're fired, <gasps> Molly. What? Why would Marco do that? You wouldn't dare. I would. And I did. That seems... Leave your badge at the desk on your way out. That seems like an overreaction. Does it not? Marco, I cannot agree with you on this. You're not going to command the Mars mission. <laughs> I am not feeling Marco oh, over it. Uh, Molly... Jumped. Jump the gun. Danielle Paul is the agency's choice. This is bullshit. It's jerking me around with this. It's pretty shitty after she already gave him and I apologize. the command. Wait, what the hell happened? Why isn't Molly telling me this? Because it's my call. <clears throat> and Molly no longer works here. As of when? As of today. That's so shitty, so Marco. Who's her replacement? Going forward, flight crews will be determined by mission parameters as defined by a selection committee. Shitty. By selection committee. By selection committee. So the weenies and the white coats are finally calling all the shots. I know this new system will take some adjustment. Adjustment? What the hell? The whole reason Deke built the system was so we know that the guy making the call has had his ass on the line just like us. Mm -hmm. And now it's just a bunch of pencil pushing sycophants. Bravo, Marco. I hope you're proud of yourself. I don't understand her choice either. Like, why is she doing this? Like, firing Molly? That's so shitty. And you, like, taking it away once you've already given it? Like, that's pretty shitty, too. You kidding me? What, uh, what happened to Ed? Why? Oh, my God, Marco, I'm, I'm so excited. And you are not going to regret this, yeah? I promise. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Like, I'm happy that it's her. But also, like, it's so shitty that they did that to Ed, you know? Her family's not gonna be happy though. Poor Ed and Molly, you know. Oh yeah. I didn't realize she was already gonna be on the moon. It's definitely bigger. Hi Bob. Uh, I don't even feel like saying that. Feels, feels wrong. Congratulations. First person on Mars. Ed, this is not how I wanted things to go down. You know that. I'm sorry. You didn't do anything. Yes, I did. Bean counters have taken over. Gordo called us. Saw this bullshit coming way back when we were on Jamestown. You know, just having it taken away from me. And for it. <laughs> for what? Danny. I know 
what you're capable of. Uh, let's not. I trained you. I've flown with you. <laughs> I gave you your first command. Let's not say something we're going to regret, Ed. We both know there are other factors at play here. Other factors? Like what, Don't Ed? Don't be shitty, Ed. On, She's Ed. younger. She is more you're qualified. Damn fine astronaut. In certain Nobody's aspects. Nobody's disputing that, but... If this were a level playing field, I'd be commanding this mission, and you know it. I don't know that. I don't think you know that. I think that you're drunk and you're saying stupid shit that you're gonna regret. I don't even know what to say. He's I've heard crap like that my whole life. But I never thought I'd hear it from you. Yeah, honestly, I'm pretty disappointed in him as well. Yeah. I know that you're drunk and saying stupid shit. But you need to stop. Hey, You're Danny. fucking up a friendship that you've had for like 30 years, 20 years. A long time. Papa, it's real. I'm actually here. I'm on the moon. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Believe it. No. Your mother would be so proud. So proud. Yeah, I wish she was here too. Hmm. I guess we're gonna go in and get you cleaned up. God damn boots. Is that Danny? Danny, this is fucking creepy ass behavior, bro. That's creepy. You can't be sitting outside her house in a car, bro. That's nah. This is stalker shit. That was stalker shit. Civil engineer, maybe. You know, my first year at Annapolis, I thought about it. So why didn't you? I wanted to fly. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to let you down. Oh, that's cute. Guess I did that anyway, too many times. I like them together. I can't help it. I mean, I've been flying for, what, 40 years and... Man. Would I have to sh Enough to... fill a shoebox in the closet? You went to the moon. A daughter that loves you. You need somebody who can lend you credibility. Somebody with a Ed long, Walter. legendary resume who can galvanize the public's imagination. Why do I get the feeling you got somebody in mind? My ex husband. I knew it! <sighs> I assume NASA was selecting him for their mission. Ed's unhappy with the way things are being run over there. Of course he is. <laughs> He's looking for his next challenge. And I think he might just love what you're trying to do here. You mean what we are doing here? Hey, everybody. Ooh. Bring it in. We're going to collectively decide? Ed. Ed. What do you guys think about having Ed Baldwin command our expedition to Mars? That'd be Ooh. radical. Yeah. Like having Babe Ruth on your baseball team. <laughs> uh, Babe Ruth's dead. I'm pretty sure Ed Baldwin's not too far behind. All right, that's pretty. Uh, no offense. Well, that is offensive, actually. But he's got the right experience, and no one's ever flown a ship like this. Exactly. He's probably stuck in his ways like everyone else at NASA. This is about leadership. The mission is over two years long. We need somebody like him. I hear what you're saying, but maybe you should give somebody new a chance. So my new doesn't have the experience I that's think it's needed. A good brainer. He should have been first to the moon. Let's make him first to Mars. Yes. Interesting points of view. All in favor, raise your hands. Yes. Okay. I will talk to Ed. <laughs> This is what I was wanting. 
Now let's see if he'll agree. Come work for me. <gasps> you practically already are. What? You're offering me a job? I think that'd be good. Uh, doing what? Whatever you want. Ooh. What does that mean? There's no That's a great official titles here, no real hierarchy, so... Great job, officer. Start with doing what you did for Polaris. You recruited the best astronauts, engineers, and flight controllers in the business. You know where the talent lies, and you... You know how to hook them. She is good. I appreciate the offer, Dev. I do, but I, I don't think so. Why? Karen. So you rolled the dice on a wild idea, and it didn't pan out. Happens to everyone. So what? You gotta. You can't show stop me somebody who never failed. Taking chances. That's somebody who I never tried. Somebody who never took risks. Yeah. Exactly. I can't do it again. I'm. I'm really sorry. What better tribute? to Sam's life then help me take what the two of you built to the red planet you don't have to get on the ship again you can do it from here I think you should do it I think she should do it Alita Rosales worked out the nerve glitch in the lunar shipyard so we have that back on the timeline I already got some ideas about who I want in my right seat hmm but as you know, he's a damn good pilot. And his knowledge of advanced avionics will come in real handy up there. Oh. Danny? Excuse me. What is it? There's something on the news you may want to see. Is it? Thanks, Nuri. Ed and Helios? Phoenix. Phoenix. Okay, they're calling it Phoenix. A new society benefiting. I feel like people. Ed's gonna come up but and... Don't take my word for it. Oh, here it's it is. Take like the word of the man who will command our mission. Here it is. <laughs> A living legend whose experience reaches back to the earliest days of space exploration. And the man who commanded the first lunar base staying alone when his crew had to return to Earth. Yeah. The first commander to operate a nuclear engine in space. Yeah. You did this, Margo. Hey, Bowman. Fly me to the moon. Let me play among the stars. Let me see what, what the hell is like on a Jupiter Thanks, and Mars. In other words, Ed Baldwin won't have to wait four years to lead our expedition. We'll be going in the next Mars launch in window, words, 1994, a full two years baby, before NASA or the Soviet Union. The oh, future shit. Belongs to all of us. With song and let me sing forevermore. Well, Danny gonna be mad about that. Danny gonna be mad about that. In other this words, is kind of Margot's fault. Molly's gonna I love it. Know. Yeah, I was gonna say, Molly is gonna Take love it. Take it to the bastards. Honestly, I love it too. I can't deny it. I can't deny it. So I have opinions and thoughts about this episode, obviously. I thought it was really good. I am glad that Karen is going to go work for Helios. I actually agree with Helios's like mission statement idea, right? Because I think that like putting the United States as like the United States on Mars, putting Russia or the USSR on or on the moon, sorry, as Russia and then the conflicts that followed the sort of like headbutting, the sort of like, like it's ours shit that followed, uh, it was bad and it wasn't good for anybody and it almost caused a whole fucking war. I think that the idea of giving the future of like space exploration and discovery and Mars to back to the people is a good idea, right? Like I think that there is a lot of danger in <sighs> private flight, like in the timeline we live in, right? Like in our world, there's a lot of danger in like private space flight just because we don't have 
maybe the same kinds of people as like NASA or these other sort of programs, right? But if they can get people who are just as intelligent and who are just as knowledgeable and prepared as the United States or Russia, you know, and like they can put them there and they can claim it for humanity as a whole without having these sort of political country ties on it, I think that that can only be good for humanity, right? So I'm kind of all for it. I don't love Danny and Ed sort of ha like butting heads and having this sort of competition about Mars. I don't love that. I don't love what Ed said to Danny. I understand where he's coming from. And especially after he talked to Karen, that he's feeling like, what is my lasting impact, right? Like I didn't build anything to last. I want something of me here once I'm gone, right? Which I think everyone sort of thinks about once you get to a certain point or a certain age or a certain place in your life, like what am I gonna be remembered for what is my legacy? And Ed is feeling that and he's feeling like he doesn't have one. And I think it's really beautiful that Karen can sort of help him to not feel that way and help to give him something that could be his lasting legacy to like sort of give him the opportunity at least to have that. I think that that's really beautiful. And yeah, I don't know. I worry for how this is gonna go. I worry for Ed, I worry for Danielle, I worry for like the inevitable conflict that this will bring. And I hope that it doesn't destroy their friendship. I hope that their conversation where he was being an asshole doesn't destroy their friendship. I hope that they can work through this and past this. I really do think that this is largely Margot's fault with Molly as well. But I think that like once you told Ed that he was gonna be able to do that, it's pretty shitty to then take it away. And I have to kind of agree with Ed that like there is something to be said about the person who chooses who goes to Mars being someone who has put their ass on the line by going to, I keep saying Mars, to space, to the moon, to wherever. I think there is something to be said about the person who chooses who goes knowing the risk that they're asking people to take, right? Knowing because they've shared that risk, because they've been through it, because they understand the importance, the sacrifice, all of that, right? I think when you do it by committee, maybe it is like, a more fair way to do it. Maybe it's a better way. Like generally things where there's more people can be less like biased and such as that. But when you take away the qualification that these people had to be astronauts, had to understand what they're asking people to do, then I think that something is lost. You know what I mean? So I do agree with that. And also like, I just, I don't know what Margot's doing, but she's kind of like, I don't know. She's kind of bothering me this season. We'll see. I just think that she is kind of like what I say goes and nobody can contradict me. And it's like, well, you need people who are going to fight back against you. If you're only ever surrounded by yes men, you're not getting the full true truth about everything, right? You need the people who are gonna be like, I think this is a fucking bad idea and you're doing something stupid. You need those people. You might not appreciate it when they say it, you might not love it at the time, but later you're gonna be like, oh my God, thank you for not just letting me be a dumbass and not checking me on it, you know what I mean? So I don't know if that's what's happening to Margo. I don't know, but I'm slightly worried about it. 
she's always been very stubborn. She's always thought that her way was the best way. So I don't know if we're just dealing with more of that and it's blowing back on characters I really like, so it's upsetting me. But I don't know. I also worry about the Russian interference. I worry about them using her and her not knowing about it. I just, I just worry about it, you know? I'm also getting a little bit shaky because I've only had coffee and water today, so excuse me if <laughs> I'm like, ah, you know? I like, what is his name? Dev Ayesa? I might be pronouncing that wrong, but I like him. I liked his speech. I liked what he said in the beginning. Like I said, I agree with his sort of mission statement and I like the possibility of Ed going to the moon. Is Kelly gonna go with him still? Because I love that idea. I gotta be honest, I really, really wish, and I said this during the episode, I really, 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 really wish that they would have left the Danny Karen storyline as like, a failed kind of storyline for season two. Like, I, I just wish, like, I don't know why they're doubling down on it. I think it was a mistake at the time. I think it's a mistake now to keep harping on it. I just, I don't know what it brings to the story that I want in the story. You know what I mean? Like, also, him calling her throughout these years, him showing up at her house drunk, him being outside her house, fucking watching her house in this episode. Like, that is not normal. I initially was like, it's not his fault. He was young, he was dumb at the time. I still don't think she should have slept with him. But like, this is, this is giving stalker vibes, Danny. And like, you're crossing a line. And now I'm starting to like, get a little bit freaked out by you, you know? I don't, I don't know. I just, I wish, I wish that we had abandoned the storyline. And it's, it's making me not like Danny. I feel bad for Karen now because like, she slept with this guy once. It makes it seem like once, right? Like she slept with this guy once, 10 years ago. And he's kind of been stalking her ever since, which is a little bit disturbing, but also like he was too young. He put too much importance on it. You should have seen it coming. You should have not done it. That was your son's friend. I don't understand why you would ever cross that line. It just doesn't make sense to me. I don't know. I just don't like it, but yeah. I keep hoping every episode that like, we're done with that bit, we're done with that bit. Like, can we abandon this storyline? Hasn't happened yet. I'm still gonna hold out hope because I don't like it, so. I do, however, love Ollie. He is precious and adorable and so, so cute. I'm here for Ollie, that's it. Uh, I wonder how the storyline with Danny going to Mars is going to play out in regards to her family because it seems that her husband and her stepson don't really want her to go to Mars at this time and I just worry, excuse me, that it's going to affect her relationship with her husband and possibly her stepson. And I, I like seeing her happy. I don't want that to be taken away from her. And I don't want this mission to be the reason that that is taken away from her. So I don't know. We'll see. I, I was upset that he reacted the way he did. I understand though, that it's coming from a place of fear because it's one thing to know the danger that space brings because we all know that that's dangerous right to go into space in the first place but to firsthand experience it and almost die obviously that's gonna put a different perspective on it for him and he loves her he married her he wants to spend his life with her so that's gonna make him 
just a lot more nervous about her doing this thing. And it's not the moon. It's not this routine sort of thing now. It's Mars. It's the unknown. It's years of her being gone. So, I don't know. I don't really blame him for being upset at the idea of it, but I just hope that their marriage can take it because I like seeing her happy. Ellen and Larry, so they ended up having a child now, which is very interesting. I'm glad that they've been able to like carve out a bit of happiness in this kind of fucked up situation that they have found themselves because of the kind of fucked up society that they live in. I'm glad that they've been able to create an area of happiness for themselves. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about her running mate currently. Um, he seems to be a lot more conservative than her. I, he seems to be a good guy. So I'm going to hold out judgment on him. But I just hope that if he finds out the truth about her, that he isn't like shitty about it. You know what I mean? Like the evangelical aspect of him that they kind of harped on makes me nervous about it, especially because of the year it is. Because he talked about being pro-life like it just it leans towards him being quite conservative in other aspects and that worries me for if she wants to enact what they would consider to be aggressive not aggressive progressive policies you know so we'll see maybe he'll surprise me maybe he'll surprise me i like seeing aleda on the moon i like that she is there. Um, it does seem to be like a little bit of she's missing her family and she's missing and like there seems to be like a little bit of disconnect, right? Because they are just like, oh, she's on a little trip, but she's actually like on a whole nother place. Like she's not on Earth anymore. I don't know. I feel like I would prioritize like talking to her more. I understand her son is like a very small child, so he doesn't really understand fully what's happening. Her dad seemed very distracted though. I'd be like, let's talk. Let's have a full on conversation. Yeah. I don't know. I'm happy that she's there though. I'm glad that they had the moment talking about how her mom would be proud of her. They got me. They got me. I think that's it. I think that I've kind of talked about what I wanted to talk about. Um, I'm really excited to see where we're going to go this season, especially like the Ed with Helios and Danny with NASA situation. Like they said that they wanted 1994. The boots that we saw at the end of last season were 1995. We're currently in 1992. I'm just curious how it's all going to play out and who the boots belong to and who's getting there first. And yeah, all of it. I'm just excited to see. Um, if you're also excited to see and you want to see the next episode and you're watching this on YouTube, you can right now over on Patreon, which is linked in the description down below. While you're over there, you can also watch my entire full-length reaction to this episode and all the episodes thus far of For All Mankind. Um, that is on Patreon as well. I need to go eat because I'm very hungry. I hope to see you guys in the next episode. Until then, bye guys!